That's not good. Something tells me that's the beginning of something bad. What's up guys and welcome back to my channel where I talk and do everything pinball. So if that sounds interesting to you, then hit that subscribe button down below. Welcome to Pinball Omnibus Episode 7, where I talk about a lot of things going on in this hobby in just a short amount of time. So let's get started. I've got news and I've got some rumors, guys. Some of these may be true, but I have to say that they are rumors for a reason. So let's just start out with some Haggis news. So Damien from Haggis Pinball has given us a full-blown factory tour. The video is available on their YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description down below. He gives you an entire tour of all the machinery that they use whenever it comes to crafting their machines, as well as giving you reasons behind all the delays and the supply chain issues that they're having due to the COVID situation. So this is one good thing is that you have a small pinball company that has put out machines that's giving you visual and verbal updates opposed to the other guys known as Deep Root giving us nothing but excuses and that's it. So we have a new machine that has been built and that is Ferris Bueller's Day Off. So this was unexpected. This is something that I honestly had uh, no information about. This, this caught me by surprise. So obviously when uh, seeing TWIP or This Week in Pinball post this today, I was like, whoa, I was not expecting this. So uh, I will put a link down in the description below. This goes for a complete interview and pictures and stuff like that. I will show the pictures throughout this section, but I just wanted to let you guys know that this looks pretty cool. And when it comes to crafting a world under glass, this is that prime example. This is what I feel like when it comes to a manufacturer taking a particular license and bringing that full world and little everything that you see. There's so many little things for those of us out there that have watched this movie quite often. It's an 80s theme, so I think oh, my audience, I think prime primarily a chunk of you are within the age group where I'm at. So this is uh, right up our alley when it comes to 80s nostalgia. And there's a lot of little things here where I'm just like, that is cool. I would not have thought of something like that to even implement if I had the money. So I'm glad that obviously other people are doing this besides me. So some things to note when it comes to this, the engineer on this was Brian Soros. The digital artist was Rebby Hardy. Now Rebby Hardy is the wife of Matt Hardy, the WWE star, and I keep forgetting, but she was also a WWE be star as well uh, it's been a few years for her i want to say but for those of you that are curious there is no relation between matt or his wife rebecca so you're telling me there's a chance my only gripe when it comes to the aesthetics with this machine is right here get you a black marker and you can fill that in and it will look a lot better I, it's it's a curse guys i don't look for these things but when i'm just scrolling through pictures my eyes immediately fixate on little things like that i hate it like i said there's plenty of more information about this game as well as interviews with the creators for it it is on this week in pinball's website link will be down below I know I'm late to the punch on letting you guys know this, but I did at least inform you of the rumor that was Steve Ritchie going to Jersey Jack Pinball. It has since then been a week or two, actually. Actually, no, yeah, since he started on uh, the second. It has now been two weeks, actually, since he started working there. And I, I wanted to talk about this, but there's just been a lot of things going on. I've been busy with a bunch of other stuff. So I'm getting to it now. And you know, obviously I can't go into a lot of things about what I do know and everything like that. We'll go into a little bit more on that when it comes to the rumor section. I feel like I could easily turn this particular topic into a whole video in itself. And I think I will do that actually, because I have many thoughts and opinions as well as things that I do know when it comes to this topic. So maybe I'll do that. So stay tuned for that. But what I can say right now is that the video that they showed of him walking into Jersey Jack Pinball for the first time, was that cringeworthy or what? Hey, Steve. 
I want to introduce you to Jersey Jack Pinball. Welcome. Awesome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. You know here. this guy? I do. Welcome to Jersey Jack. Thanks a lot. So, uh, we'll have to put masks around the main though, too, but I guess before that, maybe you want to play something before? Pinball is, uh, pinball is in our blood, right? Pinball is, it's the basis of life. <laughs> pinball is my life, pretty yeah. much. My life, too? Yes, your life, too. And his life. And all his of life. Us. All of and us. his life. Yeah. And his life. All of us. All of us. That's great. Look at all the trophies. Hopefully we win some more with you. Yeah. So. Bigger, bigger ones. <laughs> bigger ones. Okay. <laughs> all right. Cool. Let's get on this and let's go to work. All right. Everybody, our team is strengthened even more now with Steve. We're going to do a lot of great things. We are. I got a red mask. Awkward! <laughs> also, since we last met, we had the full spooky stream with Jack Danger on Halloween and Ultraman. I put up a poll on after that on which machine would people prefer, whether they wanted to have Halloween or Ultraman. And we're talking like just given to you. Like here's the, the catch is that it's given to you. So no money out of your pocket, nothing like that. And you can't sell it. Which one would you prefer to have? And with 325 votes, we see Ultraman at 55%, whereas Halloween is at 45%. That's just, you know, that's just people voting. So there you go on that. I have a video a little bit more in depth on how I felt about Ultraman as well as Halloween. Uh, the link will be in the description down below if you have not already seen that. In a nutshell, if they can tweak some of the audio issues that I had a problem with, then I think they'll be good to go. And luckily they are not done with the game. They are well aware of these audio annoyances and they will be fixing them in the upcoming future. All right, so let's talk a little bit about some rumors right here. Let's go on straight to Chicago Gaming Company and their upcoming title, which is rumored to be Cactus Canyon Remake. Now, uh, rumor is we should be seeing this game pretty darn soon. And the other rumor is, is that we're going to see a new game by Mark Ritchie that is rumored to be Pulp Fiction. Now, when it comes to Pulp Fiction, you are well aware that the person that directed that movie is none other than Quentin Tarantino. And I can tell you this, with Quentin Tarantino, there's definitely going to be something different about this machine. He has a way of having the way he wants things to be. So that could be good, that could be bad, that is yet to be seen. But if I was a betting man, I would tell you that if... I would tell you that to lower your expectations on what you think you might see. So when it comes to the rumor title by Mark Ritchie for Pulp Fiction, I will tell you that the rumor is you're going to be seeing this game at Chicago Expo. Yes, the designer is Mark Ritchie, but it doesn't mean Mark Ritchie is working for Chicago Gaming Company. He is not. He is working for a different company and that company should go public with this information before Expo. Now, I know that Chicago Gaming Company has been basically in the back burner for a good while now when it comes to getting games out, but due to the fact that we've got the possibility of an upcoming Pulp Fiction and that is not being created by uh, Chicago Gaming Company, is being created by somebody else, but Chicago Gaming Company is rumored to be actually manufacturing it for this particular company. So, with that being said, you've got the rumored Cactus Canyon as well as the rumored Pulp Fiction that will be manufactured by Chicago Gaming Company. That means that that's going to be a busy manufacturer in the upcoming months. Quentin Tarantino is very particular and demanding when it comes to the way things are with his assets. So it wouldn't surprise me if there's going to be a lot of limitations when it comes to this particular title. So that even comes to like movie clips and stuff like that. Mm, I, that would be nice, but a part of me tells me that that is probably not going to happen. We will be finding out in the upcoming months. If not, we should be seeing this at Expo. 
Next up is TPF or Texas Pinball Festival opened up the hotel rooms for all the reservations out there and they sold out within mere minutes. I am lucky enough to have gotten my room in time, but a lot of people were disappointed because they were unable to get the actual embassy where the actual convention center or Texas Pinball Festival takes place. And I will tell you since my first stay there for overnight and visiting for the weekend and having my machines there, it is much preferable to be there. So so at any point, if you feel like you need a nap or whatever, <laughs> you can easily just go on upstairs to your room and then come back downstairs and continue playing your pinball. So I will say that the TPF hotel reservations have opened up and I want to say they've got rooms on other hotels that are around the embassy. You can always check to see if those rooms are still available. Also a week or so ago, I got to play a couple of games that I have not been able to yet. And that is Alien and that is Guns N' Roses. Same owner, I might add. I have an Alien video in the works. I'll give you a teaser right here. So that is to come. I may actually get the owner of that machine up on here. I may uh, give him an interview, give him his thoughts and opinions on the game because obviously he's had more time on it than myself. When it comes to Guns N' Roses, I didn't get enough time on there to give you a full-fledged video on how I feel. I will tell you that Guns N' Roses is probably, without a doubt, the most beautiful machine I have ever seen. To stand in front of it and watch the light show go is definitely something to be seen when it comes to the cosmetic beauty of it. I will also add that this particular machine had the added washer for the most common defect on the play field, so there is that. But other than that, the uh, visuals on the, on the game, the just aesthetically wise, the game is a marvel. Now, I've also done a deep root video, and uh, there's not much more I'm going to talk about it here, but I will tell you that since that video was released, I have been contacted not by one, but by two different individuals that allegedly work for Deep Root, and they have given me the same exact date to tell me that they have been put on furlough, or were put on furlough, rather, in the middle of July. The leaks are coming, and I can only tell you that more than likely they will continue to come, especially if they are still on furlough. I mean, how much longer do you think the employees of Deep Root can really defend this company that is not paying them? And I think that's all I have for this episode of Omnibus. Another one bites the dust, I guess. Give me the thumbs up, guys. It really helps out the channel. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and ding my dong. That way you can be notified of whenever I upload something for your viewing pleasure. And until next time, guys, peace out. You're still here? It's over.